Well, it's a privilege and a joy to be with you today in mind and spirit, if not in body. I'm really sorry I'm not able to be with you today in person at the town church. Um, as you'll be, appreciate, the COVID restrictions mean, sadly, I can't come over to the island at the moment. Um, and I long to come home, as some of you might have heard uh, when I did uh, guidelines earlier this week. There's a longing in all of us to come home to a place where we know we are loved and accepted for who we are. And sadly, for so many LGBT people, that is not a reality in their lives. Uh, that is a place where home can be a place of uh, great trauma, where they have been rejected, or where there is a silence which uh, speaks volumes uh, and is loud in its disapproval. And that happens too in church. And that's what I want to touch on briefly today. I know uh, Pride is, is a day of celebration and joy. And people ask me, you know, Jane, why, why do you need to be so out there about all this? And the truth is because it really, really matters in terms of people's lives. Silence can kill. And sadly, this very week marks uh, the anniversary of the death of a young girl in uh, Manchester, Lizzie Lowe. I'm very close to her parents and indeed to that church who see me as one of their mission partners. And sadly, Lizzie took her life um, as a young teenager because she truly believed that who she was, a, a gay woman, as she, she recognised, was an abomination and that she would not find the happiness uh, that she yearned, which was to love and be loved, nor would she be able to have a family, she thought. And she also believed it would bring great shame on those around her. And it caused, that death caused a, a, a massive uh, shake-up within that church. Nick Bundock, who's also a good friend of mine and are now a lead ally within particularly the evangelical world, had to look back honestly at what he had taught and what he'd said around the issue of sexual sexuality. And as he says quite publicly, the truth is I didn't say anything because I didn't want to rock the boat. I didn't uh, want to cause what I thought was division and thought, therefore I thought it was much easier to say nothing. And into that silence, Lizzie heard and read disapproval and the consequences, as we know, were severe. And so Nick took his church on a journey uh, very similar to the one that Town Church has just been through, where they talked as a church community about becoming an inclusive church. And what does that mean? That meant that they simply signed up to a statement that they believed that the gospel was for all. No caveats, no exception clauses, that God loved us and treated us equally, independent of what race, what gender, what sexuality, uh, uh, what, what class we, we are. And in making that statement, there were a few who felt they had to leave his church and, and they found a home elsewhere. But at least he was clear. And more importantly, he's now become a place where people from right across the spectrum feel at home. He has refugees and asylum seekers. He has an increasing number of people from minority and ethnic communities and indeed the LGBT community because they know it's a place where they will be welcomed, loved and received. Now this week I'm afraid also part marks the passing of a very, very dear friend of mine. Uh, indeed, one of my best friends died on Monday. Colin Blakely uh, was the Ch Church of England newspaper's editor and he too was a very firm LGBT ally, which at times put him at a very sharp end uh, with his readership, who tended to be from a far more conservative background. And I've been reflecting on what makes a great LGBT ally. What did uh, Colin embody that others could learn from? And I think there are three things, good old evangelical, always in threes. The first is that he came out as an ally. He spoke out, he put his colours to the mast. And as he said, and others say, it's not dissimilar to coming out. You have to share with friends who you know may disagree uh, where you stand on this issue and not just be silent. 
Colin chose to very publicly support me. He invited me to write for the paper. He became one of my office holders in my foundation, very public thing, and he lost some readers as a result. And he always tried to encourage voices from all sides to engage with each other. One of the things that he said to me constantly was, Jane, it's better to be in the conversation than on the outskirts. And so he tried to enable conversations. But coming out as an ally was one of those. The second is that he called out. He called out prejudice. He called out discrimination whenever he saw it. He wouldn't allow those odd jokes or little digs and innuendos to go by unnoticed. And I believe we too need to learn from that and speak out when we hear um, either comments or jokes or indeed behaviour that is just totally unacceptable. Don't let it go unnoticed. Jesus didn't. And the third thing is he hung out. He hung out with me. He hung out with many of his LGBT friends. He spent time with us, listening to our stories, printing our stories, but getting to know us as people, getting to know our longings and our desires, our loves and our sadnesses, hanging out. So calling out, coming out first and hanging out for signs of a good ally. And I believe that that is what our, we as a church need to do. We've got so much to make up for. Amidst all the uh, the celebrations and joy of Pride today, honestly, when I saw those lights on the church and the steps in the marketplace recoloured, I just welled up to know that Guernsey was, uh, was, was, was so changed, frankly, was a place which wanted to welcome and celebrate the beauty of creation and all its diversity. But we need to learn to do that as a church too. And so I'm grateful to the town church for making such a stand. I hope that other churches on the island might choose to do the same. I hope that people will challenge their clergy and, and ask them where they stand on this issue. And to look theologically again at scripture and recognise that words and phrases that we thought were so clear are actually not what we think them to be, that Paul actually uh, was far more concerned about what he saw as the slave trade in young boys and pedastry, that the Old Testament was looking at ritual, and nowhere in the Bible do we hear and talk about same-sex love. Because God is love, and where there is love, there is God, as we heard in our reading today. And God loves to bless love in all its forms. Not when there is fear or coercion or, or punishment, but when love is freely given and freely received. So have a happy pride. I wish I could be with you. I look forward to being with you next year. And know that God loves you and cherishes you just as you are. <laughs>